You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Latta v. Nevels, Coleman Nevels. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Mr. Nevels, you are here today because you claim you are literally stuck between two women at war, your mother, Mrs. Latta, and your wife, Ms. Coleman Nevels. Now, you admit you have serious trust issues with your wife, and you say your mother is only making things worse. Now, Mrs. Latta, you are Mr. Neville's mother. You argue you're suing for the results of a paternity test on your granddaughter because Mr. Neville's wife became pregnant while he was away. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, now you say you believe Ms. Coleman Neville's cheated and he's not the father of two-year-old Nevaeh. That is correct, Your Honor. All right, now, Ms. Coleman Nevels, you say Ms. Latta needs to back off because you're almost certain her son is your daughter's father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Latta, explain to me, why are you so doubtful? Your Honor, Mr. Nevels and Mrs. Coleman Nevels was on a breakup. Jessica moved in with another guy, and shortly after that, she went to jail for 30 days. And as soon as she got out, she came straight to my son, and two weeks later, she said she's pregnant. So, in my mind, I'm saying, Your Honor, there's no way Nevaeh could be Mr. Okay, Neville's so I think father. that begs the question, how pregnant was she in two weeks? Your Honor, her and my son was nowhere near each other. She was seen on Facebook with another guy kissing him she even got his name tattooed on her body as if, as if, Your Honor, my son didn't mean anything to her. You got another guy's name tattooed during a break? Yes. Whoa. What, were you in love or something? No, I did it out of spite. Oh. oh. We were still communicating A spiteful at the time. tattoo. Yeah. Now, you know that's about crazy, right, Ms. Neville? Because that's on your body. <laughs> So, wait, fill me in. What, what's going on here? So, you're in a marriage. Yes. But, truthfully, you're in court. When he was away, were you sleeping with other people? I mean, we were on a break, and so we were able to do whatever we wanted to. It was a mutual agreement. And I feel Okay, like... so you're on a break, and you've agreed to it. It's paternity court. So, during that break, were you sleeping with other people without using protection? One other person. One. <laughs> okay, so now, Mr. Nevels, were you at the hospital when the baby was born? Yes, yes, I was from, from the beginning of the time she was born all the way to now. When your wife told you she was pregnant, did you believe the baby was yours? Yes, I did. You had no doubts? I had no doubts in my mind. Were you aware that she had slept with someone else while you all were on the break? Yes, I was. But you still had no doubts about... I had no doubts at all. When the baby was born, I suggested a DNA test, and Mrs. Coleman Neville said that would be a good idea. So, Your Honor, that made me think even more, she have doubts yeah. that that is my son's child. So, Mr. Neville, do you have doubts now? Um, there are somewhat doubts from her admitting... Admitting Why? that she had sex with guys. She cheated on me in the past with multiple guys without having any remorse of any type of feelings by cheating on me. So, how have these doubts played out in your relationship? I feel very doubtful when I look at her. Sometimes you do. it's like I see other people, so I'm like, I'm not sure if that's... Oh, wait, hold on. You say when you look at your daughter, you see other people? Explain. Yes. You mean in her features? In you... her features. Sometimes I look like maybe she looks like me, or then I maybe, I'll be, maybe she don't, or maybe the ears or the eyes. So, all you're me... desperately trying to pick out a little, connection. Little couple of things up about her that's similar to me. And when you say you see other people, are you familiar with the facial features of anyone else that your wife slept with? Yes. On this break? Yes. Wow. So, has anyone ever told you your wife was cheating on you? Yes, or... yes, yes ma'am. It was, um, a couple, maybe a couple years back, when I was walking through my neighborhood, a guy stopped me and said, hey, aren't you Dominique? I said, yeah, you go with Jessica Coleman? I said, yes. See, um, he started describing her, um, wow. 
areas, only specific, what? specific things that I would know that no one else should know. So, are you still sleeping with different people, Miss Nell? No, ma'am. As soon as we got back together, it was done. So, do you know this person your mother-in-law is talking about? Yes. You had, did you sleep with him too? Yes, but that was protected. <laughs> so now hearing this, Ms. Latta? Yes, you're right. And she admits to sleeping with someone else, but the guy that you're accusing her of sleeping with, she did sleep with him, but she used protection. It could possibly be somebody else. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling that... More doubtful I... or less doubtful? Um, more doubtful. I want this connection. I really do. But my son, he only calls me when he needs things. And it's like she's keeping him away from me. He never calls, Mom, how you doing or anything. Okay. I think it's time for the results. Are we ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. In the case of Latta versus Neville's Coleman Neville's, when it comes to two-year-old Nevea Neville's, Mr. Neville's, you are her father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Feel relieved? Feel better? It's a lot better. I feel... <sighs> I feel like a fresh new start. Yes. It is a fresh new start, you know? Now we can begin that tighter bond. You were very honest in this courtroom. And look, Everybody makes mistakes, but I appreciate your candor. You admitted that you had slept with somebody else. Yes. And they had doubts. And quite frankly, those doubts were valid. But now that the doubt is gone, we've got the results. We know that beautiful Nevea, it's y'all all family, right? Exactly. Now can you begin <laughs> to try to trust one another and, and have that brand new start your yes, husband spoke of? I think that would be wonderful for this beautiful little girl. And she really, really does deserve it. I wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> Take care of that little girl, all right? Court is adjourned. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Richardson versus Kimball. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Richardson, you say you are here today to prove to the defendant, Mr. Kimball, that he is the biological father of your two-year-old son, Brian. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you claim he has done nothing for the child and you're hoping today's results name him as the father so he will finally step up. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Kimball, uh, you feel your doubts about paternity are more than justified, as you know Ms. Richardson was sexually active with other men at the time Brian was conceived. <laughs> so, Ms. Richardson, please tell me, how did you meet and become involved with Mr. Kimball? I was about eight and a half months pregnant with my first son, and he lived across the street. Um, I was clean from drugs. I, um, about 18, 19 months at the time. And um, I relapsed after that amount of time. And him and I, from there, started a relationship. We used for a while just as friends. And then we ended up in a relationship, in a sexual relationship. So just for the record, you both are clean now. Yes. OK, and that's great. Good, good. <laughs> and so you were together mm -hmm. in a relationship. You both were doing... And we both were using, you know, using. We were running the streets with the lifestyle we lived. You know what I mean? We had, we had to do what we had to do to get drugs at that time. You were living the lifestyle of a, drug of a person yeah. addicted to drugs. Yes. But we've been clean for 18 months now. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. So during that time when your child was conceived, were you having sex with other people? No, I wasn't doing anything. I had gotten out of rehab, and I'd, I had this whole plan to be with him. 
And so before you went into the rehab, was Mr. Kimball the only person you were intimate with? He was in jail. Yeah, but when, when I was in jail, but right before she went to rehab, she was staying at another guy's house. <laughs> and she went to rehab with the gentleman, with the guy. They went to rehab together. So you thinking she's intimate with this person, she could be pregnant by anyone. Yeah, she denies being intimate with the, with the guy, but I believe otherwise. All right. So, Mr. Kimball, you have this doubt in the back of your mind. Yeah, I have doubt. I mean, when I got out of jail, I was with her during the pregnancy. You know I mean? We lived together. I took care of the baby, but I just had doubt because he has blonde hair, blue eyes. I have brown hair, brown eyes, and the baby looks just like her. And but that's the reason why I have concern and doubt. And plus, because of the lifestyle, that was the past, all the stuff she used to do when she was using drugs. But just because of that lifestyle we live in, I might have doubt that she could have been sleeping with somebody else. All right. He looks like me. There's not, I mean, your father has light eyes. My entire family has blonde hair. My youngest son has white hair. So when you see your child and you feel like Mr. Kimball is denying or not admitting or owning up to the fact that he's his child as well, how does that make you feel? I mean, he's been there through everything with me. He even, he left the town that we live in now and moved five hours away with me to my family. We, you know, we were always, me and him, you know, we were in and out of detox so much they, the staff there called us Bonnie and Clyde. And now it's like, um... Because you were like a team. Yeah, now it's like everything I do is, is wrong. What are you doing? Where are you going? You know, even going to church is, is, well, what do you do there? Who do you see there? Are you serious? Come with us. Can we be a family? Not... I want the baby to be mine, but I just have the doubt. You know I mean, people, my family has said, I mean, they, they believe in their hearts they want it to be mine, but they say it don't look like me. It doesn't. If he is your son, you want to be in his life, I'm sure. Yes. And do you want a relationship with Miss Richardson? Uh, yes, I think we can in the future. I mean, right now I'm trying to get myself straight. Absolutely. But maybe later down the line. And if the results, unfortunately, say he's not your biological son, what do you plan to do? I haven't really thought. I thought about it, but um, if he's not my son, he'd probably be devastated because he knows me as his father. He does. Yeah. So. He does. Yeah, yeah, that's daddy. So you have a bond with this beautiful little boy. Yes. That's your son, you're his daddy, and you're just living with that doubt. Yes, Your Honor. And it's now eaten away at your relationship and it's still eaten, eating away at you. Yes, very much. I don't know if I could be his father still if I'm not his father. Wow. Miss Richardson, I can tell this is really, really hurting you. I just don't understand. I mean, the person who he thinks that I was with was seven years younger than me. I had nowhere to go. He was nice enough to let me stay at his house. I mean, I just watched somebody get his face beat in with a wooden stick and his eyeball hanging out and his arm broken. He knows all the stuff that happened to me. He, like, I, it was horrible. He thinks I was having fun on the street, and I wasn't. Yeah, I she, wouldn't have went to rehab. I had a free apartment. If I was having fun, I wouldn't have yeah, went to rehab. You used rehab. to lay on the couch with him. So what? I wasn't having sex with him. He was with my him. little brother. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. There seems to be a lot of issues between I don't think... If, if he was his, his father, he, he doesn't feel... Anyway, he doesn't feel like it's his responsibility to have to support. That's how he is. So it wouldn't matter. He just feels like it's his right to come in my house and go through my stuff, go through my phone, do what he wants, come and go as he pleases, eat my food. It wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't. I know that. I've been he still wouldn't. This no, baby you have not. Day one. No, I you got... have not. My mother has. You no. got what? Rent you, receipts you from would... the tax money that was mine? You wouldn't even have got the apartment if I didn't pay for it. You couldn't, your DSS couldn't afford it. If you got it with the tax I, money that was and right I furnished mine. furnished your whole house. You got, I got you a couch, TV. Okay, let's, let's, let's. Use old stuff from our last apartment. Let's use respectful language Sorry. in the courtroom. 
I think the only way we're going to be able to move forward is to get the results, and uh, I think it's time. Jerome, the envelope, please. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Richardson versus Kimball, pertaining to nine-month-old Brian Kimball III, Mr. Kimball, you are Brian's father. I'm happy that I'm the father because I'm the only one he knows as his father. So now it can ease my mind and I feel a lot better now. And I can go on loving him the way I have. Good. Good. Miss Richardson, does it feel good finally to have those results done for Mr. Kimball's sake so that he can get past whatever his doubts were? Yeah, I hope it changes stuff a little bit. We have resources for you that are going to help you continue to think about how you can overcome each and every day. It's a daily thing. And we want to help you do that. All right? Okay, thank Very you. Very happy you got the answers you wanted today. We're wishing you the best of luck. And I'm so, so proud of you both. Keep up the great work. Keep the faith. And just keep going. Right? Thank you. Thank you.